Hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Alex Musmej. Um, so I guess my life has been a lot about decentralized autonomous organizations. I'm not sure if you all saw the panel a uh, few minutes ago, but so my I've been part of a lot of DAOs in the past seven months. I guess my main one is Meta Cartel, and so I want to go a bit more in depth into what this means. So first. Uh, what is a DAO? So a DAO is decentralized, which means um, it is transparently recorded on a blockchain. So in this case, Ethereum, um, which means that all the members can see every single process. The second thing is autonomous. There is no board of directors. There is no DAO CEO. Um, it's a sole uh, rotating thing. At least that's what we're going for. And the third thing is organization, which means uh, it can be a charity, or it can be a startup, or it can be a corporation, or eventually it could maybe be a government. So the real goal of DAOs is scaling human organization, which means that uh, I think the best way to found a company is starting a startup. Um, and it's fine to start with a few people, but then when you scale, to perhaps thousands of people, it gets really hard. When you see like the biggest uh, companies today, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, they have 50,000 employees, but it's harder to, to go even beyond this. Uh, there's Wikipedia perhaps that work, but Wikipedia relies on donations because uh, you cannot do a paid Wikipedia. And so this is one example of how it, what a DAO can be, like a giant for-profit Wikipedia. Um, so let's talk about uh, my DAO framework, which is Moloch. So Moloch was born on the 14th of February, uh, so Valentine's Day uh, 2019. So it's super, super recent. And it was in the hackathon. And we basically, uh, it, it was aimed at funding Ethereum 2. So as most of you know, blockchain is so far very slow, uh, very expensive to use. And so Ethereum 2 is a major update that's looking to solve these issues. And so Moloch was about coordinating funding so that we can more efficiently fund engineers uh, doing research and development for Ethereum. So the Moloch system is super simple. It's literally uh, you raise money through a DAO, you collectively vote, um, there is no quorum requirements. That means like even if one person says yes on a proposal and zero say no, it passes. And, and the, the discussion, like the vote is accepted. And so yeah, it coordinates fundings, uh, we think, more efficiently and faster than traditional organizations. So for instance, if you're on a grant on most traditional companies or uh, NGOs, it can take up to six months for seven months. With Moloch, it takes two weeks to one month, so it's much, much faster. And it's also more efficient. So in the case of Ethereum, uh, it's an open source project. Everyone can participate and, and contribute to the GitHub of Ethereum 2. But if every single team separately uh, was spending money on engineers doing R&D, uh, it will cost way more than if we centralize it because there is no more communication silos, there is no more uh, friction or duplication efforts, like two teams building the same thing. With this, we coordinate transparently and we collect the funds and allocate it on, in one place. So the killer feature, I think, of the framework is called Rage Quit, which means that at any point, uh, you can leave the DAO with your funds. And so that solves two problems. The first one is that it's really hard to get a lot of people agreeing on one thing. So at any point, if you disagree enough, you are free to leave the DAO and withdraw all the funds that you have in the DAO. That's the first pain point it solves. The second pain point is, um, of course, hacking funds. Because blockchain is not um, invincible, right? Uh, people can hack the code. We've seen the DAO in 2016 where like, roughly like $1 billion of Ether uh, with like two days value was stolen. And so we really do not want to see that happen again. And so if a hacker wants to spend all the funds, there is a window where people can rage quit and say, no, like I know I'm going to get my phone stolen, so I'm going to withdraw it before. Um, and so Moloch DAO uh, was battle tested. We audited the code, so it seemed like there was no window for hacking. Uh, and so we raised funds from Vitalik Buterin, Joseph Lubin, 
consensus in Ethereum Foundation. We raised 4,000 Ether. So that's kind of like what uh, put Moloch on the map, pretty much, because uh, then we got much more recognition from the space. Um, and so Moloch is fine for exceptional engineers who want to make Ethereum 2 happen. But uh, Meta Cartel DAO is uh, someone called Peter Pan, it's his real name, uh, who redeployed the Moloch code. Like on GitHub, like the first line of code is, please steal this code. Like anyone can steal this code. And so Peter Pan uh, and her team redeployed the code uh, and said, well, instead of funding Ethereum 2 development, we are going to fund uh, crypto startups. We're going to fund Ethereum startups, people building on the application layer. Uh, whether it is decentralized applications, whether it is smaller DAOs, whether it is social media uh, on the blockchain, anything. And so, yeah, the meme effect, because look at this logo. Like, this is not a real company logo. It's, it's kind of a joke. And so why, did we, why do we not have, like, a normal company logo? Well, it's because it was a community. It's the open source movement. And so it's more like a meme because the logo was voted in the DAO. And so people just, like... I don't know, like the focal point was probably like a joke around Chile. I wasn't around, like it was like the very start of the DAO. Um, so who, what do we fund with Meta Cartel? Uh, we funded a few startups, so that's Minbase uh, for NFTs, so it's collectible tokens, unique tokens that can be used for art. So like your piece of art is one token and you know it comes from the author. And so it has some value because of the scarcity. Um, then events, there is Kickback. Uh, for instance, Kickback, it's an event ticketing event, like Eventbrite but it allows you to stake money on going to an event, and if you don't make it, your stake gets slashed. And the people who actually show up get their funds back, plus they split the missing attendees fee. So that means that you are economically incentivized to make it to an event, because the people, there's always people missing in every event. Like, there's like the strikes in France right now, like, not everyone made it to this, and so if it was on kickback, that means all of you present here today would have made some money, so it's just a fun experiment. And then DeFi, so of course, like, decentralized finance is the main revolution of Ethereum. Um, we funded Ardai, which basically, like, um, so people have money, right, principal, and then we have interest. So th the bank interest can be like 1% a year. Uh, in crypto, it's much higher because there's people borrowing funds and sometimes it can go up to 15% a year. And so that money is enormous. Uh, that interest rate is very big. And so Ardai decided, well, what if you could spend your interest, not just for you, but spend it on other things? So for instance, maybe like the environment, um, uh, you can give out your interest to like planting trees or solving uh, Australia bushfire crisis that, that's happening right now. So it was just like a fun way to experimenting with new financial products. Um, then we also, of course, Ethereum needs a lot of user experience. Uh, it's too hard for people to use Ethereum today. And so we are also funding uh, UX tools and developer tools. So for instance, DAO builders, we really want someone who doesn't know how to code to be able to build its DAO very easily. Um, so this is Pokemon, which is like Pocket Moloch, where you can build uh, Moloch DAO in two minutes, and it's live today, it's dahouse.club, and you go to the website, and literally, you can build your own DAO. Of course, you need to know about Ethereum smart contracts, but it still lowers the barriers of entry of making a DAO. Then there's Average, which is a really awesome company, like the best people, uh, most talented people in the space uh, building this. It's a smart contract wallet, so it's for developers to build their own application, and instead of having like Ethereum addresses, it's just email and password. So it's very easy for the users to use Ethereum. And they are working on many other projects like Telegram bots for DAOs. So it's literally just texting. Like we really want to make it as easy as possible to interact with Ethereum. The third thing is DAO experiments. So we also fund other DAOs. I think a very funny one is Yang DAO. So you know Andrew Yang, the presidential candidate for 2020 in the US? So we said like, it's kind of like the most like meme worthy candidate and so people from Meta Cartel funded this project um, who basically would reward a meme on social media uh, that kind of boosts Andrew Yang, like deep fakes of like Barack Obama with like Andrew Yang face, just like funny things. And we just like gave money to them and also like gave money to like top callers of Andrew Yang. And actually Andrew Yang noticed us, but he was like, well, it's not really legal, so we can't really like approve it or say it's a thing, but it was still a very funny experiment. Uh, and yeah, all, all sorts of other DAOs, like, for instance, this DAO, uh, 
That was like in uh, Japan. So in Japan, there was DEF CON, like the massive Ethereum conference. And we, people pooled funds, like $500 each. And then we had this massive pool and we decided to throw events. And the DAO collectively decided to do like whiskey tasting in like Osaka in Japan. And it was just like very fun and it proved that it actually works for like small scale. Of course, we're all like uh, Ethereum, like blockchain maximalist and passionate people, but we hope we can like deliver this to uh, other people, of course. And so two learnings from um, my time, uh, my last seven, eight months is people over technology. So uh, this is like our event, like Demo Day Meta Cartel that was really fun in Berlin uh, last year. And so we, we really don't want blockchain to be like, for instance, like for the DAO, like every person clicks, like it's very annoying. Uh, we really value maximum human intervention and minimum code because it's already hard to convey blockchain value proposition. Like it's too hard to have everyone just click on the blockchain and vote. So when we want to fund a DAO, we discuss internally like via whatever, like uh, Telegram or Zoom, or we just see each other sometimes face to face, and we decide it, and then someone puts it on Moloch and someone votes for it, but not everyone has to actually click on it. We just, there's no on-chain uh, majority. Like, of course there is, it's called a Chrome, but we don't have any. Uh, if one person passes, as I said, like, uh, it's still fine if zero says no. Um, so we value social consensus, which is like informal consensus, like not on the blockchain. And then, so how to scale it? Because what I just said cannot really scale. Like you cannot just accept people informally and talk informally. Like it has to be sometimes formalized. And so we're trying to um, put some gamification, which means like maybe, I don't know, like if you tweet about a DAO, if you do an article, if you organize an event, if you speak at a panel, if we can have some levels of contribution and then when you reach level one, you gain shares from the DAO, that would autonomously have thousands of people join without any human intervention. So of course, when I say maximum human intervention, it's because we want to experiment. Um, because it's too hard for now, and we're just experimenting, but this is what we want to go for. And so why, first of all, like remote first. So we cannot check people because sometimes they're all over the world. Uh, Peter Pan is in Australia, I'm in France and the US, there's people in uh, New Zealand, just everywhere in the world, like it's super, super spread out. Um, and then autonomous, of course, like if we can gamify it so that like people complete levels and join the DAO, then there's no more, like you don't need anyone to onboard people. And then the DAO just becomes autonomous, which is the A in DAO. Then, so what is next for Meta Cartel? Uh, so far, we've only done grants. Uh, we've done grants only because uh, legally it's very hard to do profit on a structure that is not incorporated. We are not incorporated like uh, anywhere. We are incorporated on Ethereum. Right, like this is our settlement layer, but the world doesn't work that way, of course. And so we are trying to transition to. So this is a better logo. Uh, we're trying to transition this year into for-profit DAOs, and instead of just giving grants, we want to actually invest and become a proper venture fund, uh, kind of like the family that we might know uh, in Paris, but really uh, towards the Ethereum ecosystem and uh, every single rule and processes adapted to this new emerging ecosystem. So yeah, venture funds, but of course it has to be legal and now we are looking to incorporate, we will incorporate in the US um, with something that's called the LAO. So the LAO is legal autonomous organization. And so that way you can handle, so it's an LLC in Delaware, I think, uh, in the US, which is like the main place for founding companies. Um, and so you can handle like all of this like SAFTs. I don't know if, I'm not sure if you'll find out with SAFT token. It's like in between like tokens and equity for, for startups uh, and claims tokens, like all of these things like security tokens, all these legally enforceable things uh, are being implemented right now uh, with open law, which is a venture, uh, which is the legal arm of consensus. So yeah, we're trying to um, make some uh, new steps in pioneering uh, legal DAOs so that we can actually make profit. And then of course, Moloch was a really nice experiment. And so last week we uh, did Moloch V2. Uh, we released Moloch V2. And so Moloch uh, V2 has more things. So I told you the V1 was fairly simple. It's just coordinating funds, raising funds, and uh, deciding. And Moloch V2 actually has um, differentiate between tribute, which is like the amount that you give to the DAO, 
and the token. So now you can give out any token, not just Ether or DAI. You can give out any ERC20 token, which is like the standard for tokens. Uh, there's also Luke tokens, which is like non-voting shares. So this means that if you want to pull money to the DAO, if you want to donate to the DAO, but you don't want to take part into any decision, you can get loot. Uh, and then Guild Kick, which is in the previous DAO, uh, if you really don't like someone because his decisions or her decisions are really bad, you cannot kick, her, kick him or her out. So we decided that there's a, there will be a rule where if we are really upset about someone, decisions, we can just collectively kick uh, that person. So that's the new feature. And so yeah, that's it. If you want to follow Meta Cartel on Twitter, uh, this is the Meta Cartel original grants uh, DAO. Then there's Venture DAO, which is what I just talked about, the new version, which is for profit. And then Alex Musmej is just my Twitter. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.